Good morning. Oh, y'all got to be better than that. Good morning. That's awesome. That's awesome. Happy, happy Sunday. Glad that you are here today. Thank you for being here to worship with us today. Excited to have our kids in service with us uh, today. Uh, elementary school kids. Always good to have them. And uh, man, what a, what a fun, fun weekend this has been. Um, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, we've got the trunk or treat tomorrow at the elementary school that we're helping with. We've got our three vehicles um, that we're going to be out there. Uh, I think, Miss Sandy, do we have enough candy? I'm pretty sure if we got, we got candy. We're going to be giving out a bunch of candy. Candy. I heard on the radio yesterday that the average kid, how many, 70,000 calories they eat in candy over Halloween weekend? Can you imagine that? They said it'd take, how, how many, 44 hours of walking to walk that off. So, uh, mercy, I'm going to try to double that this year. No, no, no. I'm, uh, but I'm excited for that, excited for the way that this church serves. And, uh, man, it's a good day to be here. Um, today we're going to be continuing in our Life and Stuff series, and we're going to be talking about how to hear from God. Uh, man, what a, what a fun, exciting, I, I've just, this has been a good week, um, it's been a good week for me personally. Uh, just th this whole this whole study has been very very good. Um, so we've got uh, got a couple things that we want to do uh, kind of to start off. Number one, Glendale Baptist Church today is celebrating their hundred and fiftieth uh, birthday as a church, and we are grateful. Man, we're we're excited for them. What a big, big deal um, that is. And Miss Carolyn is over there playing the piano for them. They've got several former pastors that are, that are going to be there today to help celebrate with them. Uh, I'm so excited for Kyle Elmore and uh, the work that he is doing out there. Glendale is one of the, man, that is a sweet, sweet church. And we are grateful uh, to have them uh, as a ministry partner. You guys know that we're not in competition with each other, right? We're the same team. Whenever they win, the kingdom of God wins. And we all win. Um, that's, that's what we're trying to grow is the kingdom of heaven. And, uh, man, grateful for a good friend in, in Kyle over there at, at Glendale. My dad is actually going to be leading worship for them today. And uh, just funny, funny, funny. So uh, it's exciting for that. Um, and then Miss Leanne Jensen. Um, we want to just stop this morning and, and pray for Miss Leanne. She found out last, uh, I guess, two weeks ago that... Uh, she had some, some tests run, and, and, and she found out she's got cancer, and it's in several different places uh, in her body. She's going to go this week and get a plan of attack um, on that. So, uh, Miss Leanne, where are you at? Right here? Right here in the middle. If we got some of our ladies that would like to gather around Miss Leanne and just lay a hand on her, get close to her, just, uh, just get over there by her, um, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand right here, and we're going to pray for, for Miss Leanne this week. Before we go any further. Guys, this is what we do as the church. <clears throat> we, we hold each other's hands up whenever they need to be held up. We walk alongside each other. We pray for each other. We go to the, go to the Lord, the, the ultimate healer, on behalf of one another. So let, let's pray. Lord, thank you that, uh, that you are the great healer, Lord, that you are the, the one who knows. You've seen the past. You've seen the present. You've seen the future. You know it all. Lord, you have ultimate power. So, Lord, as Ms. Leanne goes this week uh, to, get, to get a game plan together with her doctors, Lord, I pray that you would already be in the healing business in her life. Lord, in times when we don't know what to do, when we're unsure, when we're uncertain of the outcome, uh, Lord, I pray that, that all of us would have peace in you. God, I pray that you would give her and her family extra, an extra measure, an extra helping of your grace and your peace this week. That, that they would be near to you, that you would be near to them. And Lord, we pray for healing and a great and glorious testimony of your faithfulness. Lord, we know that ultimately, Ms. Leanne's healing has already taken place. 
for because of what you did on the cross. Lord, so we trust you in all things. We thank you for Miss Leanne today. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> amen. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Well, if you are a guest with us today, uh, I want to say welcome and uh, thank you for being here. I would love it if you would grab one of these purple cards that you find in your seat backs and just fill out the information on that card and drop it in one of the offering plates as you leave. Or you can come bring it to me. I'll be standing, hanging out right up here after the, after the service is over. And I would love to take that from your hands and introduce myself and just get to know you a little bit, be able to pray for you this week. Um, Our state convention was this week, this past week, and I uh, just want to say a word of thanks to Miss Betsy Danielson. She was on our state convention's uh, sexual abuse task force, and they've been meeting over the past, I don't know, six months or so, uh, maybe, maybe closer to a year, and uh, they, they've made an incredible presentation, recommendation for our churches, our institutions across the state uh, in Southern Baptist life, and, and they've done a lot of work on that, so we, we thank Miss Betsy Danielson for uh, lending a great legal advice to that team and uh, grateful for her work on that. Uh, so, man, what a good day. Let's not, let's not mess around anymore. Y'all ready to worship? All right, well, let's do it. Um, Brad, you ready? ready? All right, let's get after it. You guys stand up and let's sing. Good morning, first number. Can we worship together? Sing this out.
Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness Still in your hands this is my confidence, you never fail me yet. I know the night won't last, your word will come to pass.
and we will see you this morning. Mercy, mercy. There is a better way to hear from God. And, uh, and what, a, what a sweet, sweet time of worship this morning. And uh, man, Pastor Brad, thank you very much. That was, that was good. I mean, that was good. Y'all hear that? Does anybody else hear that or is it just me? No? Oh, do y'all y'all hear it? Isn't that funny? Isn't that I I, I really I don't hear anything. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to see what y'all would do. It, it's it's funny whenever somebody says, "Did you hear that?" Everybody stops and they pay attention, and you hear what sometimes you want to hear, and you hear sometimes what you think somebody is saying, or so, the, there's something. So Pastor Brad automatically knows that there's a little hum in the lights. And so he's, he's thinking, that's what I'm hearing. And so he's hearing that. My wife is sitting over here going, I don't hear anything. You're crazy, <clears throat> which is appropriate um, because she can hear much better than I can. As a matter of fact, if there's something ever goes bump in the night, um, she says, did you hear that? And I said, no. She said, would you go check it out? What am I checking out? I don't. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what I heard. I didn't hear anything. So uh, uh, it, it's just. It's interesting how we hear, and sometimes how we'll we'll almost be like, oh yeah, I hear that, even when we don't. You know, hearing is a. It's an interesting thing. Um, it's an interesting thing. And one question that I hear a lot is, how do I know that the Lord is speaking to me? How do I know that the Lord is speaking to me? Or how can I discern God's voice? Which really is a, is a bigger question of how do I know what to do? You know what? That's, that's a question that a lot of people ask. is How do I know what to do? Does the Lord want me to do this? Or does the Lord want me to do that? Or does the Lord want me to do something completely different than, than any of those? And whenever we talk about hearing from God, there's a couple of things that that we can, uh, we can know for sure. Number one, that there is a, there's a general revelation of, of what God has said. And he said that to everybody. Everybody who's a believer in Jesus, God has, God has spoken, right? So in, through his word, we know that, uh, uh, for example, we're to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. So God has, if you're a believer, God has spoken that to you, right? 
Okay, great. Well, then there's also this a specific revelation that is, that is unique to you, that God tells you or prompts you to do that he didn't prompt everybody to do. Whenever I was in high school, my senior year, I, I really felt the Lord calling me into ministry, into full-time vocational ministry. And God didn't, God didn't call everybody like that. He didn't tell everybody like that. Um, some of you guys, he called into teaching, into uh, the medical field, into the vocational field of uh, plumbing or electricity or all kinds of other stuff. God calls us in different ways. and not, I mean, we're not all the same, right? We're all different. And God has got different strokes for different folks. So a, a lot of times what we see is whenever we're saying, well, how do we hear from God? What we're asking is, like, how do I discern what I'm supposed to do? How do I know that God has told me to do this? And we live in an interesting time period uh, in the world. There's a unique time in history, previously unknown freedoms we have today. We have the freedom of occupation. You can pretty much do whatever you want to do. We have the freedom of, uh, to choose our own spouse. We have the freedom to choose our own state, our own city, our own county, where we live in the world, where we travel in the world. Did you guys know that in no other time in human history we could decide on one day that we want to go across the world on the next day, and we have the ability to make that happen. It's crazy. Like, we have freedom of choice. Whenever I was growing up, <clears throat> it seems further and further along, long ago because things have progressed so quickly. But, like, I woke up on Saturday morning early to watch cartoons. And on my television, you had two dials. And the top one was broken, so you had the, the vice grips. And, and you took the vice grips and you moved the channel around. And so you picked one of those three channels. And whenever I woke up, it was early enough that there was still static. And you waited and you waited and you waited. That's right, until the national anthem came on. And that national anthem kicked off the day of TV and cartoons. Oh, and you had the flag waving in the background there, and then it was Bugs Bunny time, baby, and I was happy, happy, happy. Now, I can watch TV 24 hours a day, and I can't keep up with all that you can watch. It's amazing. My, my, one of my new favorites is the NFL Red Zone channel. I don't know if you guys have, have got the, the Red Zone channel, but like that is a, that's a game changer. You don't have to flip back and forth anymore. You can watch all the games and the important parts, like they're about to score. Okay, well, let's watch this one. It's all, I love it. I love it. We've got so many choices today from what to eat, from what to wear. It's just insane. And a lot of times... It leads us to analysis paralysis. Like we just, we get hung up on I don't know what to do and I don't want to make a choice. And I don't know if y'all have ever had this conversation at your house, but whenever it comes to where do we want to eat for dinner, sometimes my wife's favorite restaurant is I just don't want to have to pick. The frustrating thing about that is whenever it's I don't want to pick, and so you just go ahead and pick something. All right. So I'll say X. I don't really want that. Why? I don't really want that. Z. I don't really want to go. It's one of those. Nobody else has that. No. Right? No. 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 People far, yeah, people far, far away in a different, different area probably deal with that. And, um, I had, li listen, I'm just going to, uh, can I just get real personal with y'all real quick? We played football in Alma yesterday. And it was raining and cold, and I just was like, man, the Cracker Barrel's calling my name. And then I realized Catfish Hole is over there in Alma, too. And we were only like a mile and a half from Catfish Hole, so that's the first time in about 10 years that we've gone to the Catfish Hole. I said, Sarah, Catfish Hole, and she went, <gasps> that's the kind of restaurant that you like, right? Man, I had some frog legs and some catfish fillets. Son, 
Oh, it was good. It was good. I didn't even have, there wasn't any choice after that, right? And when we, when we talk about hearing from God, a lot of times that's what we want. Is we just want to take the choice out of it. We just want God to say, do this. Like Moses in the Old Testament, he heard the voice of God, and God told him exactly what to do. Paul, in the New Testament, he heard the voice of God, and God told him exactly what to do. And that's what we, that's what we want a lot. There has been a lot of television evangelists that have uh, cashed in on their so-called ability to hear from God, mostly that God wants you to send some money to them, right? Listen, you want to be aware of any religion or religious person who claims to hear from God on your behalf or for you. Or that you need to, to be there at their gathering because uh, God is speaking through pastor so-and-so. And he's going to be there to preach and, and the, Holy, the Holy Spirit's going to show up. Beware of any, any religion, any religious system that, that cashes in on the power to hear from God for you. Listen, if, God, if God's speaking through me, here's what that means, that I'm preaching the Bible. That, that's what that means, first and foremost. I don't have anything to say to you guys today that can change your life. This has things to say to you that can change your life. I don't have any hope to offer you in myself. I don't even have enough hope for myself. I have to rely on the same word of God that everybody else does. I don't have any market on hearing from God or channeling like, oh, if I could just get the pastor to pray for me. Listen, I don't have any special line to God. I don't have the red phone that I get to pick up and say, hey, Lord, I need to, I need to, uh, I need... no more than you do, right? That's, if, if the Lord is speaking through me, if you're like, man, that, that message was, was really, really awesome. Okay, well, if that's, if that's the case, praise the Lord because it was him that was speaking through you. And I know that we've got a lot of kind people, and, and I hear, I, I mean, I hear a lot. Like, thank you for that. I mean, that, that the Lord was really speaking to me through that. And I'm like, all right, well, great. How is that going to change the way you live this week? Because if the Lord is speaking through you, then it ought to, ought to bring change in our life. This whole week, I've been studying on this, on this passage from 1 Samuel chapter 3. So if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and turn there. 1 Samuel chapter 3, it's in the Old Testament. In the, way, in the very Old Testament. So it's close to the front of your Bible. And I, we, we actually kicked this off on Wednesday night with our students and with our kids. This, this passage out of Samuel on hearing from God. We talk about how the word of God is so powerful that if, if God is speaking through me, then it means I'm preaching his word. The Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit shows up, listen, it's because if you're a believer, you showed up. Because if you know the word of God, you know that 1 Corinthians chapter 6 says, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? So you are not your own, you are bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. When, when we gather here together, the Holy Spirit is here. You know why? Because you're here. Isn't that awesome? That, that's truth from God's word. The Holy Spirit shows up if you show up, if you have been saved. And he shows out if you obey. If you obey his word, like the Holy Spirit just is incredible. So what we often want is for God to speak and to tell us, though, what we want to hear. Anybody ever pray those prayers? Probably people from far off somewhere else, right? Just pray like, Lord, man, just show me what to do and please make it be your will that I, that I get this job that pays a lot more money. Or, Lord, please just make this situation in my life, make it to where I'm more comfortable. Or make it, make it to where, Lord, I'm, I'm just, I'm happier. And would you please, uh, Lord, my... My spouse has just given me a really hard time, and uh, it's just frustrating, and I, don't, I would sure like to be happy, Lord, and I know that you want me to be happy, so Lord, uh, if it's your will for me to leave my spouse, listen, 
There's a lot of us that we buy our own lies, right? That's the voice that we listen to is the voice inside our head and we tell us ourselves the wrong thing. And God, God doesn't necessarily want you to do what makes you happy. Sin will make you happy for a season, right? Do what makes you holy. <clears throat> and holiness will make you happy. Hang on just a second. catfish i mean it was so in first samuel we find an interesting story of hearing god's voice we're going to look through this we're going to take away some things uh at the end that are very very practical ways to hear from god <clears throat> let me kind of set the stage here uh if you if you go back into first samuel chapter one what you see is a woman named hannah and Hannah comes to the temple, and, uh, and Eli is the priest there at the, at the temple. And Hannah is, she is distraught. And she's praying, and she's begging the Lord to bless her with a son. She wants a baby, and, and she just prays and prays and prays. And, and she's uh, just distressed. And she's praying, and she's not praying out loud. Her mouth's moving. And, and Eli sees her, and she's praying so passionately that he thinks she's drunk. So he goes over to her and, and she says, no, I'm just asking the Lord to give me a son. And she makes this vow to the Lord that if he would bless her with a son, that she would give that son back to the Lord to serve him there in his presence for eternity. That's a big, that's a big vow. And Eli asks the Lord that he would honor her prayer. And he does. The Lord remembers Hannah. She gives him a son. She gives her a son. He gives her a son. Pronouns. And she does exactly what she's vowed to do. She brings the boy Samuel to Eli, the priest, to serve in the temple. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 26 we see that meanwhile the boy Samuel grew taller and he grew in favor with God and man with God and people this is exactly how we want our kids to grow much like Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and favor with God and people so Samuel's growing up and as he grows up he's growing up in the temple he's growing up around the things of God he's growing up around the word of God which at this point, I don't know if y'all see like we've, we're only this far into the Bible, so not much of it has been written down yet. They don't have the full Bible to go off of. They have Moses. They have the, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible at this point, and they're going over that. They have the law of Moses. And in 1 Samuel chapter 3, Verse 1 is where we're going to kick off this incredible story of hearing from God. So before we read, let's pray. God, as we read your word today, I pray that you would speak to us. Lord, as Jesus says many times, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. I pray that you would give us ears to to hear from you today and then the wisdom to obey. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for being close. Thank you for hearing from us today. Would you move in our hearts? Make us close to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to read the first 10 verses here in 1 Samuel, and then we're going to skip to verse 19 and hit 19 through 21. So here's what we see. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there was no frequent vision, which is how the Lord spoke often in this day and age, was through a direct word to someone or through a vision. And at that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see. He was lying down in his own place. 
and the lamp of, the, of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. That's the ark of the covenant. Then Samuel, or then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down, and the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Go lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. It's interesting that Samuel was around the things of God. He was around the people of God. He was at the place of God, around the ark of God. But he still did not know God yet. I wonder often how many people we have in our church and in our churches who are around the things of God, who participate in the things of God, in the processes of God, but do not know God. That's a scary thought to me. And the Lord called Samuel again. This is verse 8, the third time. And he arose and he went to Eli and he said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak for your servant hears. And then verse 11 through verse 18 is what God said to Samuel. And we're going to skip that part. Why? Well, because today it it doesn't matter to us. Because God didn't tell us what he told Samuel. This was Samuel's specific revelation from God. It doesn't apply to us. But... The process does. So we'll jump to verse 19 and we'll see what happened when Samuel heard from God, when he obeyed God, and what happened. And it says that Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all of Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established as a prophet in the Lord. And the Lord appeared again at Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. It's interesting that all the things that happened to Samuel as he heard the Lord, as he obeyed the Lord, as he did what the Lord had said, he spoke truth. His word was established. None of it fell to the ground. None of it was wasted. People knew that he had heard from the Lord. So on Wednesday night, we we asked our kids a series of questions about this passage. And we just read and and ask them questions and say, what did this say and what did this do and what did this mean? And then we, we get some thinking stuff going on. And so here are the questions that we asked our kids on Wednesday night. What was Samuel doing? He was serving the Lord. How was Samuel serving the Lord? By By assisting Eli. The third question was, did God speak to people much at that time? Kids, anybody? No, they didn't. No, at that time, God didn't speak much at all. Do you think it was a coincidence that Samuel was serving the Lord when the Lord spoke to him? That's a good question, huh? It's a good question. Where was Samuel sleeping? He was sleeping in the temple by the ark of God. Do you guys remember what the the ark of God, the the ark of the covenant, do you remember what that represented to the people of Israel? The very presence of God. Where the ark was, the presence of God was. It was a big, big deal. Can you imagine having been close enough to to sleep near the ark of God? I've seen Indiana Jones. I know what power that thing has, right? I wonder how many nights Samuel had slept there 
before God called him. These are the things I, I mean, I just, I wonder about that kind of stuff. Like, how long had Samuel been sleeping right in that same spot before the Lord called out to him? Listen, I, I think this teaches us a very, very important thing. Just because you don't hear from God in the, in the immediate, like, all right, well, I'm going to obey God, and all of a sudden expect, like, God to be just, okay, well, let me just pour out depths of secrets, you know, of, of the universe to you. Like, don't expect the first time you obey for, like, the Lord to just sweep in and make just radical, like, besties kind of deal. It's not, listen, there's a lot of time that goes by sometimes before we hear from the Lord. A lot of times after we have a, a significant move of God in our life, there's, there's a period that follows that's a period of, of silence where we don't hear anything, where sometimes it feels like the heavens may be shut up and, and things are just not the way that you want them to be. And, and why are there those ebbs and flows in our, in our spiritual lives? I'm not sure. I'm not, I mean, I absolutely, I'm, I'm just not sure. I know that before we adopted Cooper, the Lord spoke so, I mean, there was a time there where it was just like, in prayer, you would pray and the Lord's presence would be so close that you felt like if you opened your eyes and turned around fast enough, you might get a little peek of him. Like he was just there. And then, man, after the adoption was finalized and everything, it was like, all right. It almost felt like there was a period of just silence. I don't know why. I hadn't done anything wrong. Like, it wasn't living in open sin or anything like that. The, the, it was just like, I don't know. Every time that the Lord has moved us in ministry, it seemed like, Right before, man, he, there was a certain kind of things that you know, the Lord just spoke and spoke clearly. And then after we made the, made the move for what we felt like the Lord was telling us to do, then after, after we made the move, it seemed like there was a time of just quiet. Almost like, Lord, did we, did we hear you right? I mean, do we hear you? Right. We spoke to Bethany Christian Services. This is not in my notes. We felt God calling us to adopt, and my goodness. After we heard, like, the need. We thought we were going to international adopt. And after we heard the need in the state, we were like, no, give us a domestic packet. Like, and they were like, you know, it's, it's October right now. Like, you, like, there's a possibility that you'll have, I mean, there will be a baby that you'll have by like, Thanksgiving, like maybe even before then. So we were like, man, we flew, like my wife set a record on getting all of the paperwork done like we just felt a, an urgency to go fast, fast, fast. Like, Lord, we're, we're here, we're, we're getting our stuff done, and, we're, and then we're waiting. Thanksgiving came, and Thanksgiving went. Well, I mean, we've got X number of, of pregnant mothers, and expectant mothers, birth mothers, and uh, we went through Bethany Christian Services, and through them, the, the birth mother, actually, you put together a, a, a profile book of your family, and the birth mother chooses the family that she places her child with, which we loved. Christmas came, and Christmas went. Valentine's came, Valentine's went. Whew, Lord, did we hear... We hear you right. Anybody else ever been in a place like that? Lord, are you 
Are you sure? Because I'm not. Then we got to Memorial Day weekend. We got a call. It said, your family has been chosen. A birth mother has, has chosen your family. And there is a All we knew was there was an African-American baby boy that was going to be born. In a week and a half, two weeks, we went to the hospital. The day after he was born, Baptist Hospital in Little Rock, walked in with an empty baby carrier. And we started doing some math. From the day that he was born, if you track that back, about nine months. Now, the Lord's never wrong. He always speaks right. We don't always hear right, but he always speaks right. And listen, sometimes God speaks, sometimes he remains quiet. And if he's quiet, Just continue to do what you know to do until he speaks again. Just don't quit. Keep listening. Keep listening. Samuel didn't know who was calling. Because he had never heard from the Lord. When you were a kid, how did you know when your mom or your dad was calling you? Because you heard them call you a lot. They started calling you early. And for some of us, they called us often. And if they ever called us by our middle name, you knew it was serious. When Samuel realized that the Lord was speaking to him, what was his reply? Well, it was the same as it was whenever he thought Eli was speaking to him. He, he got there quick. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Now, what a great response for when the Lord speaks. Here I am. I'm listening. So how did God speak to Samuel? In a voice, in an audible voice. Stu, have you ever heard the audible voice of God? I have not. I have not. I mean, not to my knowledge, anyway. So how does God speak to us today? And how can we know when God is speaking to us? When we hear God's calling first, it's usually to salvation. It's usually to know Him. For, for me... I was I was in the fourth grade whenever I finally answered and said, all right, Lord, I'm listening now. But I remember the Lord calling out to me much earlier than that. I remember hearing the Lord's voice. And by, when I say hearing the Lord's voice, I don't mean with my ears. I mean like there was a, like a drawing from the inside that I felt the Lord calling to me to know him. When I was in the fourth grade, I finally said yes. And that's how, that's how God works. His initial calling is usually he convicts us of sin and our need for Him. But after we're saved, He speaks primarily. Listen close. Primarily through His Word. 
That's why we call it the Word of God, right? He speaks through the Holy Spirit as we read His Word. We chew on His Word like an old cow that chews something up, swallows it a little bit later. They're chewing on it again. What are they doing? They're, they're soaking every little last bit of nutrients out of that food that they can get. When we meditate and just spend time and dwell on God's word, man, he speaks to us. You want to you hear from God? Read the Bible. You want to hear God's voice out loud? Read the Bible out loud. I mean, really, like that's, it is that powerful. And the more we hear God's voice and obey, the more we recognize him when he speaks to us. So let me ask you, let me ask you this question. When is the last time that you had a conversation with the Lord? When is the last time you, you remember God speaking to you, God prompting you to do something, the Holy Spirit urging you? Last Sunday morning, my daughter Emily went to get gas down here at Casey's, and she gets out of her car, and she hears somebody yelling, wait, 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 and it's Amy Daniel, and she's probably going to get on to me for telling this, but she said, I, I just felt like the Lord was telling me to buy somebody's gas, and then I saw you, and I'm going to buy your gas today. And praise the Lord for that. You know, how to, you know how to have those kind of things happen? You know how to recognize when the Lord is urging you or recognize when the Holy Spirit is prompting you to do something? You obey when He prompts you to do something. Listen, most of hearing comes from obedience. If, if, we're, if we're not obeying the Word of God, don't expect to hear from God. I mean, don't expect Him to talk to you. If you're not already doing what he said. I'm grateful for people that hear from the Lord and his prompting and then they, they act. Listen, Samuel also slept close to the presence of the Lord. And there's, there's all kinds of wisdom by staying in such closeness to him that whenever he calls us, he doesn't have to yell. So what's, what's our takeaways today? Let me, let me wrap this up here. We're going to see several things. Uh, number one is, is the position towards God. All right, in this, in this story here, we see Samuel's position towards God. Closeness to the presence of God. Stillness in the presence of God. It was at night. He was just trying to sleep. I think a lot of times it isn't that God isn't speaking as much as we're just not listening. Or we're too far away. Husbands, I mean, have you ever noticed that your wife will wait until you're all the way across the house to tell you? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I'm, I still don't have any idea. And so what do we have to do? We have to get close. Right? We have to get close. You need to be close to hear. You need to be close to hear. I'm reading a book called Winning the War in Your Mind by Craig Rochelle. And here's, here's what he, an excerpt out of this about Elijah the prophet. Who had forgotten that the Lord was near. And here's what he says. He needed a reminder and God gave him one. God revealed himself. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after there was a great earthquake, and the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. 1 Kings chapter 19. 
God was not in the wind. God was not in the earthquake. God was not in the fire. Silence, then a whisper. God was in the whisper. Here's what he says, but why would God whisper to Elijah? When you're overwhelmed and feeling anxious, if you listen for his voice, you'll find that God is whispering to you. But why? Why does God whisper? He whispers because he's close. And he whispers to draw us close. Think about it. When you're sitting next to a loved one and they whisper in your ear, what do you do? You lean into them and you listen closely. When we're hurting, when we're afraid, when we're overwhelmed, we may shout up to the heavens and wait for God to shout back. We wish for an audible voice. We don't understand why God doesn't speak loudly to us, commanding our attention in some obvious way. But why does he do this? Why doesn't he do this? Why don't you hear him? Perhaps God wants you to slow down, to be still, to listen carefully for his soft, comforting, quiet voice. Isn't that good? It's just good. I love to mow. I love to mow. For two reasons. Number one, it's one of the few things in life that I can do and immediately see a result. I mow the yard and I've done something and I can immediately see the accomplishment of it. Instant gratification. The other thing is it gives me time to be still. I have some great talks with the Lord on my lawnmower. I hear from the Lord a lot on my lawnmower. Or in a deer stand where I'm quiet and I have to be quiet. I've been laying some block for a little patio out behind our house. and It's pretty slow and redundant. And I just listen to the Lord a lot. Those small, still, menial. Man, the Lord is close. He's closer than we understand. We're just going too fast to stop and hear. The other thing we see is, is we see that Samuel had a person of God. His name was Eli. He was a trusted, faithful, godly God. When Samuel didn't know what to do, Eli did. But it took him a minute. Who is your person that whenever you feel like the Lord is speaking to you or you feel like something's, I, I, need, I need some wisdom here. I need to, I need, who is the person that you go to? Who is your Eli? Listen, everybody needs an Eli. They need somebody that you can go to and say, hey, I, I think the Lord is speaking to me. What do, you, what do you think here? I'm grateful for a, and this is not a long list either, by the way. You'll generally have, you know, two, three folks in your life that, that have that Eli to you, a person of God that you can go to to help you understand, are you hearing from God or are you one of the people that tries out for America's Got Talent that can't sing? You know, like you need somebody to tell you the truth and, and to help you walk through that. Another thing is we see the, the place of God. He was at the temple not just attending, but he was serving. Man, you want to hear from God? Serve God. You'll, you'll hear more from God and you'll understand more about the ways of God by serving God than you will in any, than by sitting for God. Like you want to hear from God? Serve God. Don't sit for God. Serve God. And then we see a prayer to God. Uh, you say, Stu, I don't see a prayer in here. Sure you do. You see Samuel talking to the Lord. You see the Lord talking to Samuel. It's a conversation. God says, Samuel. Samuel says what? 
Speak, Lord. Your servant is ready to hear. Your servant is listening. You want to hear from God? Here's the way to do it. You open this blessed book right here. Every day. Maybe multiple times a day. And you begin to read. You don't have to read a lot. You can read a chapter. You can read a few verses. You can have a a, a, a devotional guide that kind of has you walking through a certain section or a certain topic of things. And then as you, as you sit down and as you open it, as you look at these words, the first thing you do is you say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And as you read, listen. As you read, listen. What is God saying to me? Right here. Lord, what do I need to do? Would you speak to me, Lord? And then also use common sense in this. If you say, Lord, what do I need to do? And you open up to the passage where Judas goes out and hangs himself. That's, that's not God saying, no, you need to go hang it. Like, that's not it, Right? Speak to me, Lord, what do I need to do? I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. It's not necessarily a big showy thing. It's not a spotlight thing like Paul got. It's not a deal where we all try to work up the Holy Spirit to show up and, and give us a word and then somebody prophesies and that was the word of God. No, the word of God is the word of God. The word of God is the word of God. The word of God is the word of God. I'm going to challenge you this week, every day, to read the Word of God. Well, where do I start? Well, there's all kinds of places to start. You say, do I have to start in the beginning? It may not be the best place to start. I mean, it may be the best place to start, but there's, you can open this thing up anywhere. One of my favorite places to tell people to start is the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. Man, right there, look, I mean, it just, there's all kinds of good stuff right there that starts out in John chapter 1. Read about the life of Jesus. Get to know him. Get to know how he worked. Get to know how he spoke. Get to know how he drew people. Get familiar with hearing from God. And the more you hear from him, the more you recognize his voice. You know, the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. They hear his voice. When's the last time you heard from God? But more, more to the point, when's the last time you wanted to? When was the last time you wanted to? I hope that you want to. I hope that you really want to hear from God and that you've, you're excited to obey the Lord when he speaks. Let's pray. God, I thank you that you still speak. That you have given us the greatest gift. In your son, Jesus. And Lord, just shortly after that is your revelation of his work 
on the cross for our salvation and how to live in the scriptures, Lord, in the Bible. Lord, and in that we find out how to know you, how to obey you. We find out how to hear from you, how to serve you, how to love you, how to love people, how to, Lord, everything that we need for life and practice is, is right here in this, in this book. So God, I pray that we would not look for a sign from you until we have searched your word. That we wouldn't look for the extravagant or the emotional over the truth and consistent obedience to you. Lord, I pray that you would give us a desire to know you like we've never known you in our life. Lord, that you would be close to us so that whenever you whisper, Lord, it sounds like a shout. That we would trust you. That we would draw near to you. That we would humble ourselves, Lord, and hear from you. Lord, we thank you for your call into our lives. Lord, would you help us to always obey and to have ears to hear so that like Abraham, Lord, whenever you call us, even when we're old, our response will still be, yes, Lord, I'm listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, if you... Uh,